Hello, uh, welcome once again, all my doctor friends. Sorry for a little bit delay in posting all this uh, uh, recall question, uh, but I'm sure you guys have, must have done the exam very well. Uh, at least I heard from people that micro was much easier compared to other subjects. Uh, but even if you have made some mistakes, whatever, no need to worry. We will uh, wait for the result and definitely you guys uh, will get a good thing only. Uh, so let's start the session and see how you have uh, done, okay? So the first question here was, here the first question was, the patient was having a, a perianal itching, okay? This is a frequent repeated question. You know, it's the very easy, you know. Perianal itching itself is enough to say that it is a enterobase vermicularis. Yeah, already option is there, but then still, they said perianal swab showed the following egg. This was given, okay? If you see the shape, it's almost like a D shape, no? D shape, plano concave egg. Yeah, plano concave D means itself, you know, whenever there's a perianal itching, the child would say, you know, instead of saying ma, ma, the child would say d d na d d d d. That's what I, the idea is simply to say that the shape of egg is D, then that is enterobase vermicularis. Pin warm, seat warm, so many names are there, you know, so many names are there for this. So I'm sure you did good. H nana clinical history short, but even if you want H nana, that's different. You'll be seeing what? You will see six hooklets, three pairs of hooklets, and a polar terminal end will be there, and a thick cell wall, uh, the wall, not the cell wall, the thick embryo wall will be there. Okay, so that's not there. And cyclostomal duodenal, that's basically hookworm. Hookworm, you know, inside you will see this, uh, this egg, you know, like hexacanth embryo, they say, you know, like this embryo you will see, the clear space around that we don't have. Ascaris, it's very easy. Ascaris, if it's uh, depend upon uh, fertilized, unfertilized, you'll see the embryo inside with the space if it is uh, you know, fertilized, no space if it is non-fertilized, right? And a thick lobulated like this type of uh, outer wall you can see in the egg. So anyway, our answer is enterobase vermiculose, that question. That's easy. And I hope all of you made, even if you made a mistake, don't worry. Always remember, when you talk about enterobase vermiculose, perianal itching, the child would cry D, D. So the shape of the egg should be D shape. That's it. Very simple. Next question. When you go to the next question, uh, here, uh, sorry. So next question, if you see, uh, this is also a very interesting question. A young boy was using contact lens, one clue contact lens. Regularly, he was using the contact lens, but was not using a proper lens clean. That means it was contaminated. The contact lens which is using is contaminated and he developed keratitis. Okay, pictures was not given. They only said this. On microscopy, the organism showed spikes. Spikes, okay. One clue, whenever there's a spikes, the other name for spikes is econ. Econ means itself, it's a spike. So you already got a clue in the question itself, okay. But still, even if you forgot uh, what to do, sir, I'm confused. There's one clue I always tell, to, I told you guys, uh, please remember, don't have to remember every micro, okay? Everything, this is a fun and easy way to remember. So I told you, remember our, this popular uh, singer, Econ. Everybody knows him. And for me, he is like, I assume him as a gay, okay? He is a gay guy, okay? G-A-E, not G-A-Y, gay. You, you assume like that. And what gay guys do, you know, they usually like to wear a lot of contact, colorful, colorful things, no? So they wear contact lights. And second one is their favorite thing is spikes. They always have spikes on their head. Okay. Same with our icon. See, he is going to have a spike and he is wearing contact lens. Okay. So I meant to say, I'll tell you why I said this contact lens things and all. And then he has a double chin. You know, he has a double chin also. Okay. And he has a, he become, they, they, at one particular time, you know, they get a double chin. Okay. Remember like that, he is a gay. So why it is gay? Because it was granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. Granulomatous amoebic, amoebic encephalitis okay encephalitis because you should know there is nigeria foul area also free living uh, amoeba which come from the swimming pool there you're going to have you're going to have primary amoebic meningo encephalitis but here it is granulomatous encephalitis that's what i told you to remember gay remember acorn is a gay contact lens because of contact lens he's going to get what this keratitis just exactly they have asked in the question contact lens and then keratitis you got no you got keratitis he got like this spikes why spikes when you see this one this amoeba you see the trophozoite it has beautiful spikes Okay, so you answered all. All the points are here in this easy. So when Econ is a gay, everything becomes easy for you. It's a spy. You get a contact lens. He has a spike and double chin because the cyst wall has a double layer. It has a double layer cyst wall. Okay, it's a double layer cyst wall. So if you see in this picture here, you can see it very well. Like this, this one, this double layer. Okay, so it's very simple. So you would have not made mistake if you remember this sort of again. Okay, so next time also, uh, if you prepare for further exams also, please remember like this. Grand limit is amoebic encephalitis. Contact lens, spikes, double chin. Finish. Your akantamioba is over. So the answer is akantamioba. Okay, akantamioba. Yes. 
Good. Next question. Next question is a very interesting question. We'll go here. A patient after eating oyster consumption, oyster, some seafood, okay, developed diarrhea, abdominal pain, and food. Oyster means they want to confuse you with saying the seafood. The, in, in this option, if it is fish, if it is, you know, crabs, or if it is prawns, whatever it is they give, I, the answer would be same only, okay. The organism also shows Kanagawa phenomena, okay. So Kanagawa phenomena means I always say, uh, there is one girl, we have a Pauru, we have, a, I told you to remember Pauru, there is one Pauru in the Parvovirus Pauru is the Choti Pauru. There's one more Pauru also, which I made myself to remember. Her name is called Vibrio Pauru, Vibrio Pauru, okay, Parahemolyticus Vibrio Pauru. She has two stories, she has two group of friends, one friend for swimming, for swimming party, you know, for swimming or swarming party, for swarming party, she has a friend, you know what her friend's name? One girl name is Prochita, other girl name is Sarah. Okay, this is for swimming pool and they have what party swimming me? Tea party, they are having tea party. Okay, tea party, swimming pool, tea party they are having. So what is this sir? Because, because here you should know swimming, when I say swimming, I'm talking about swarming. Okay, swarming motility. When I'm talking about swarming motility, there are four things. What are they? One is your Vibrio parahemolyticus. Okay, so Vibrio, that is Vibrio Paru, that is V Paru or Vibrio Paru. Okay, she is swarming along with what? Along with Prochita because Proteus, Sarah because Seratia, Seratia, and another one is your T. Why did I say T? Because it's a closed radium tetani T party. Okay, one party over. Now she has another party also with whom? With this girl called Kanaga. She has another party, another friend called Kanaga. Okay, Kanaga, where she's having the party? She's having it in the Vaga Beach. Okay, Vaga Beach. We, we have heard Vaga Beach. Now there is also called Vaga Beach. Okay, why did I say beach? Why did I say Vaga Beach? Because in Vaga Beach, she eat lot of seafood and ended up in what? Seafood means full of salty, salty food. No, she ate full of salty food and ended up having what? Diarrhea. Okay. Now, I think you already got, why did I make this story? Very simple, because the first thing is Vibrio parahemolyticus. Okay, parahemolyticus. Why did I say Kanaga is the best one? Because the phenomenon name is called Kanagawa phenomena. Why did I say Vaga, Vaga Beach? Because there is this media where the Vibrio parahemolyticus grows well, that is called Vagatsumo. Vagatsumo, Vagatsumo agar. What is a Vagatsumo agar? In Vaga Beach, what do you get? You get seafood. So, there is increased salt concentration in your blood agar okay in the blood agar the salt concentration is increased that's what what happened you get a beautiful hemolysis in your blood agar that is the reason that's the meaning of kanagawa phenomena kanagawa means para vibrio or viba paru goes along with another friend kanaga to which beach vaga beach that is vagatsumo agar where the salt foot are very high there that's what she end up what diarrhea that means here the meaning is the, the what is vagatsumo agar Increase salt in the blood agar, so the hemolysis, you can see a proper hemolysis. So that means this phenomenon is called Kanagawa. So even this is for understanding, but in a shortcut, just be seeing without wasting any time. If you have known this, uh, this idea, which I've given Vibas, uh, Viba Parus, that is Vibrio Parus, two party, one is swimming pool party, other one is beach party. In beach party, she goes along with the Kanaga, take full of salt, put get diarrhea, and that is Vibrio parahemolyticus only. Anyway, okay, so your answer is Vibrio parahemolyticus. Very simple. Next time, don't forget Viba Paruka best friend is Kanaga or these, these people. Proteus, Seresia, Clostrum, Titani. Very simple. So you don't need any, anything to remember. Easily you would have scored this question also. Okay, I hope you guys did it right. Next question. Next, a lot of young female question this time. A uh, young female presented with a symptomatic UTI. So symptomatic UTI. She has symptomatic UTI. One thing. On urine culture, the Staphylococcus Coagulase negative, okay, first of all, staphylococcus, okay, fine. And it was a coagulase negative, okay, that is one of the cones. So if it is cones, there are only two things. If a staphylococcus, if it's coagulase positive, it's staphylococcus aureus. If it is coagulase negative, it's called cones, coagulase negative staphylococcus. Two things, one is your staphylococcus saprophyticus and other one is your staphylococcus epidermidis. There are a lot of clue. There is only one thing to distinguish these two, that is your novobiosin. Novo bio sin. Okay, novo bio sin. No bio sin. No bio sin is usually here in the uh, staphylococcus, it is resistant. It doesn't work. 
but in epidermidis it is sensitive that's it okay that is the clue that is the thing there's a lot of clues if you remember they tell you to remember like stress r s t r e s s how to remember no stress no no stress no for no no con novamide novabiosin no for novabiosin s t r e s s so s t is saprophyticus which is novabiosin saprophyticus resistant but okay Epidermidis is sensitive. That's what they want to say. Epidermidis, E for epidermidis, S for sensitive. S for saprophyticus, T for resistant. No stress because NO stands for novobiosin. Very simple. This is one clue if you want to remember. Okay, now that is, for, we, we found the answer is staphylococcus saprophyticus. But it doesn't matter. It is saprophyticus or epidermidis or anything. You know why? In urine, if any of this infection comes, any of this infection, staphylococcus, gram positive comes, you have to treat it. You will be considering is a UTI only. Okay. But here already symptomatic UTI. And number one, usually what happened, the colony should be more than 10 to the power 5. But here, being they've given a clue, she's already symptomatic, they've given. So even, even single colony, the patient is symptomatic, and even if there's a single one colony of staphylococcus, you have to treat it. So the answer is please consider this UTI. This take a three urine sample when it is asymptomatic. When they say it is asymptomatic patient, then you can tell them a oh, repeat or whatever. And no treatment, no, you have to treat because symptomatic is given, so you have to treat. Contaminated sample, if if this was there, if this staphylococcus epidermidis was there, and then there is no any symptom or whatever, I would easily see the contaminant or more than three types of colony, more than three types of organism is there, then I would simply say it is contaminated to don't send the sample, three types of organism growth. But now here, clearly symptomatic, and it's clearly staphylococcus, it doesn't matter, staphylococcus aureus or saprophyticus or whatever, okay, colony count doesn't matter here. You have to treat. Symptomatic means if it is staphylococcus, especially I'm talking gram-positive cocci, you have to treat it. Okay, here we're talking about staphylococcus. Okay, so consider anything staphylococcus comes, it is symptomatic, especially if they're symptomatic and have this thing, you have to treat it. Comat, the count doesn't matter. Okay, that's what, that is the idea of this one. Okay, right, next one. Identify the organism. We need to go to identify this organism. See, this is very, uh, something like this picture was given. It is already clue. We already know that when there is figure of A like this, it means what? You can turn easily into B. So, B. So, one is it look like B. Other one is what? Look at this broad base. So, this broad based, if there's a broad based budding cell, then that is B for blastomycosis. So, don't even think easily you can mark the blastomycosis. Otherwise, it's called Gilchrist disease. We spoke that Gilchrist, after, uh, after winning his uh, after, uh, cricket match, once he won, he goes to Chicago to have a blast. So, it's Gilchrist disease or it is also called Chicago disease. So, blastomycosis, dermatitis. Finished. Very simple. Okay. Next. Now, desert rheumatism. When you talk about the desert rheumatism, we always said one thing to remember. I always said this is the Arthur, Mr. Arthur. The cock name is Arthur or Mr. Arthur is having this cock. Okay, this cock is there. So what is do? First of all, look at this cock. It is standing on a barrel. Barrel is otherwise barrel or what you call you call rectangular arthrospore rectangle arthrospore why did i say arthur because of this only arthrospore and it's on the it's standing on the barrel barrel shaped conidia or arthroconidia they are same barrel shaped conidia and what happened this cock is going through what happened it was walking through the valley this cock is walking through the valley okay and it walks through the desert the cock, this cock walks through valley, Arthur's cock walks through valley and desert. I don't remember like that. Valley because you have valley fever. Valley fever, next time you might get a question, valley fever caused by. Or this time there was desert rheumatism. Okay, that is uh, the symptoms are male, like joint pain, fever, and all those non specific symptoms. That is what we call it as valley fever because you have fever. So, this name word comes, please mark it as cock. Cochidiosis, why? Because cock, cock is cochidiosis. Arthur because arthroconidia. So, Arthur's cock standing on the barrel but it is it is going where it's going to the valley and desert that's it cork is going to the valley and desert valley fever desert traumatism two simple very easy question these all are uh, definitely you must have not made mistakes especially if students if you are preparing for more than one year two years then you are not allowed to make mistakes in this question if you're preparing like short then it's fine in uh, upcoming exams may you'll do better but if it was uh you are already working for two one two years then these are very simple questions you might uh you know didn't uh, read properly or whatever. Okay. So another question what I heard was that this one, Arthur Kunis. Again, I'm saying when this word Arthur comes, only thing you have to think in your mind is what cock. 
you have to think cock. And cock is what? Cock is basically ortho means this is the one. See, ortho this is a rectangle, this is the orthoconidias. Okay. Ortho means cock. So cock means cochidiomyces. Same thing. The question is repeated twice. I, I, if whatever I got from the people, if this question was there, then it's fine. Otherwise, also the previous the, the desert traumatism is cochidiosis. So these are dimorphic fungi. Okay, these are dimorphic fungi. We have discussed a lot in our uh, revision uh, classes. So now next one, a patient presented with the abdominal pain. Fever, bradycardia since four days. Okay. So this it looks very non-specific. Only thing is bradycardia. When they talk about bradycardia, they're talking about relative bradycardia. And based on all this thing, it looks more a typhoid fever only. Okay, typhoid fever. So typhoid fever means itself, you have to remember only one thing, one person, Basu. Our Basu for diagnosis, Basu, salmonella type B, but Basu. Basu repeatedly we have spoke many times before, you know, that is the blood agar. B for blood agar or it is the bone marrow agar, whatever, you know, blood agar, bone marrow, bone marrow is the best one. Agar, uh, sorry, blood, I mean to say blood, so not agar, blood or bone marrow culture. Okay, culture, you're doing culture of the patient blood or the thing, that is culture, blood culture or bone marrow culture. The best is bone marrow, but blood is usually used. Okay, number one, the basu, A for a for your antibody test. When you talk antibody, the only test we're doing for typhoid is your Vidal test. So it's Vidal test basically. Yes, for which one? Stool. Stool culture. Stool culture. And other one is your urine culture. Urine culture. Okay. Now how? Till first week. Till first week. First week, blood culture is the best. And till second week, after I mean after that, the, till second week, antibody, Vidal is best. Then in third and fourth week, up to third and fourth week, both third and fourth, you stool and urine. So here the fever is four days. So up to first week. So it is definitely blood culture. So you don't even have to think easily. You would have mass culture. So salmonella typhi comes, typhoid fever comes. Remember Basu. Basu is having typhoid fever. We have any friend Basu, he is having typhoid fever. Okay. So this is also one simple question. There is no less chance that you made a mistake in this question. This question is next question is definitely confusing question. Uh, if you are a little bit uh, careless, then you can easily make mistake. So here, a farmer, first clue is a farmer. Then they have said retroorbital pain. Retroorbital pain comes means my mind will automatically think dengue fever only. It will go usually to dengue fever only. And but unfortunately, what happened? This retroorbital pain can be seen in your uh, leptospirosis also. Malaria, not so much. Possible, but not that much. Leptospirosis also. What about fever, body ache, joint pain? All common in both. You can have in dengue also. You can have it in leptospirosis also. Malaria also. You can have all these things. So, and conjunctival uh, suffusion. Conjunctival suffusion also common in both. In it can uh, happen in dengue also, leptospirosis also. Hypokalemia. Hypokalemia also can happen because of if there is a hemorrhagic symptom or if there is uh, anything related to uh, liver, kidney function, hypokalemia can happen. So now there are, the clue is like if the fight is between malaria is out. Malaria totally out because there are many symptoms, congenital suffusion, uh, joint uh, hypokalemia, few of the things are not correlated to malaria. This is out already. We leave this one. Okay, so retroorbital pain is not that much common in this thing. So fight is between lepto and dengue but one clue is the farmer so if it is farmer we know that that is the three hours we talk rice paddy rain and rat rat urine right right urine so that's what what happened when these things happen the, the patient gets leptospirosis that's basically when leptospirosis become uh we also call what we when ecto hemorrhagic fever we call as wheels disease if you remember it's wheels disease ecto hemorrhagic so based on only clue farmer the answer would be more to leptospirosis because there is no other distinguishing feature here. Rest all are non-specific symptom. It can happen both in leptospirosis also and, deng and dengue fever also. Okay. So, morally, I will choose leptospirosis. Okay. The, this, this is according to what I have discussed with my doctor friends. Leptospirosis is very uh, right answer for this question. Okay. Yes. Next. This is easy. So, uh, no need to go to the question only. Just by seeing this, this is a fruit bat. Fruit bat, I... Tell, uh, I told all my doctor friends, remember like fruit means in Hindi it is fal. No, fal, fal, fa, fa, na, fal, fa. It sounds more similar, fa, fa, nifa, nifa virus, nifa. Okay, so the answer is already nifa virus, but uh, again, they've given a fruit former, they've given that is one clue. Crude former Asia, present with breathing difficulty, fever, encephalitis, and he was exposed to below animal. So what is the virus causing this? So fruit bat. So fruit bat means it is basically your Nipah virus. So you're getting the answer is your Nipah virus. That's it. Very, very simple. So there's one clue. You can easily make this question. Okay. Right. Next, Ebola is just the bat. 
and Zika it's a mosquito you know that is a tiger mosquito so this two also out okay next uh, next question uh, this classic triad chorioretinitis hydrocephalus intracranial calcification so your confusion would be basic will rule out first rubella definitely not rubella more you talk about cdc cdc is for cataract deafness and cardiac defect okay cardiac defect you know pda pattern of arteriosis so that's out ebola ebola may few symptoms are not that can chorioretinitis is not characteristic for ebola so this calcification can happen but otherwise hydrocephalus sometimes but not that classic out so the fight is between tocal plasma and cmv but one important thing is that in cmv virus you have intraventricular you know there's ventricular calcification v for v v for ventricular okay they didn't give ventricular they directly gave intracranial so i remember cc when there's a c chorioretinitis hydrocephalus calcification comes toxoplasmosis so more towards the toxoplasmosis a few symptoms the cmv possible but that's intraventricular calcification so we're not including it so your answer is toxoplasmosis very uh this was another confusing question like leptospira and dengue here this is another question that can usually you know make you to get confused a little bit okay so toxoplasmosis so now next question next question is also a very interesting question uh good they ask this type of questions which is very uh, relevant in your uh, clinical side also when you go you will understand when you become once you get pg feet you you will understand these things. Uh, so the patient with this, especially uh, people who work in ICU, anesthesia people will come through this very commonly, very easily. Every day they will see these cases. Okay. So there's a patient with central venous line, central line was done. And then there was a fever and sepsis due to uh, staphylococcus epidermidis. So they might have given the blood culture to us, microbiology, and we identified it to be staphylococcus uh, epidermidis. Okay. So now you know that. When talk about staphylococcus epidermis, it comes under the cons. Cons, one of the things is the staphylococcus epidermidis. The staphylococcus epidermidis characteristic feature is wherever anything, you know, anything with the IV, IV cannula or any catheter, anything like rubber, you know, anything like uh, uh, any devices, any devices, whatever it's going into, urine catheter or it is uh, IV catheter, IV cannula, device, anything comes, no. Staphylococcus epidermidis is characteristic. You will easily find Staphylococcus epidermidis. It's a pathogen that leads to what? It can lead to sepsis. It leads to sepsis or infective endocarditis. These two, for these two, this epidermis is very, very common because of the biofilm formation. Okay. So that is dangerous. That's really dangerous. So imagine a patient is having a central line and you gave, gave us blood culture and Staphylococcus epidermis. And I'm, and I'm already saying it is very dangerous because it causes sepsis, infective endocarditis, and you have to treat it. So what you treat it? Do you go directly first? They so remove the central line immediately start the antibody treatments commensal antibody treatment is good but imagine that tube whatever the uh, catheter iv catheter you already put it into the patient it is having this biofilm and full of epidermis is sticking there so the first thing you have to do is immediately remove the central line and start antibiotic. Antibiotic, yes, you have to start. But first thing is that you have to remove the main source. So remove the central line immediately and then change it in the different location, live different place. But meanwhile, what you can start antibiotics? Meanwhile, okay. And it's a common sense. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. It can be common sense in other cases, but not in the central line patient. Anything, it's a any not even that, even if you make any shunt or anything, you know, catheter device, anything comes. You have to think if it's if your blood culture so staphylococcus epidermis, you have to treat it. Okay, in other sample doesn't matter, but in blood, definitely you have to treat it. Okay, so that's anything related with the catheter. You have to remember you have to treat staphylococcus epidermidis. Okay, the main thing is first remove the central line or catheter, or IV cannula, wherever the source is, remove it and put a new one. Okay, that's all. Okay, next. Another ICU, again, it's very interesting. Uh, yeah, because, you know, hospital, these are hospital-acquired infections. These days, hospital-acquired infections are very, very common. So I think now the trend is going to change. Now, in upcoming exams, also, there'll be more hospital-acquired infection. It could be this, this, uh, now what we talk about is a cowtree. This, uh, this, this, uh, this, this uh, the one given here, this is basically a case of, case of what? Clapsy, we call central line associated bloodstream infection. Clapsy, okay. Central line associated bloodstream infection. Next time you might get a cauti, that is catheter associated UTI, urinary tract infection. So please, nowadays we will discuss more hospital acquired infection also in upcoming exams. So just be careful, okay, a little bit alert. So now again, an ICU patient with a central line and something happened and then they have stained the, the stain showed that means they must have taken the blood and sent for blood culture in blood culture you must have they must have isolated this uh, blood culture mostly it's about 
blood culture on here. So they saw a gram positive oval shaped budding cell. So whenever you know when you see gram positive, you guys would be like, see, first of all, gram positive car, the shortcut is you know that is which should be purple and gram positive so violet or purple color. The shortcut is McDonald's that you know Mac. D O N A L D S. This to you know thoroughly, you know. Okay, all mycobacterium, acinetobacterium, cornebacterium, diphtheria, uh, your anthrax, nocardia, uh, listeria. Okay, diphtheria and diphtheria is two other. And yes, for staphylococcus or streptococcus. So by thinking this, you might have thought, okay, gram positive came and you jumped into staphylococcus or staphylococcus. You might have made this mistake. Right? But one thing we always forget is that most of the yeast candida, my, I'm talking about fungus. All the fungus, they are gram positive only. Okay, they are gram positive. Hardly you see any gram negative fungus. Mostly they are gram positive only. Whenever you're talking about budding yeast cell, it is crypto or candida or anything, it will be gram positive only. Okay, so now they have given very nicely. This picture was given or not, I'm not sure. But even if they say, uh, maybe picture is not given, doesn't matter. The only thing is that oval shape budding. So you, it should be like this. See, it's an oval shaped with a small budding is there. Then that is definitely your candida. Answer is candida. So if you ask, sir, why not this thing? It, why not uh, staphylococcus, staphylococcus, streptococcus are not oval? They are cocky round shape. They should be round shape. And the size is very, it's, just, it's, uh, it's one by fourth of a budding easel. Very smaller compared to uh, uh, budding easel. It's very, very small if you compare. So that's what the answer is not staphylococcus. And E. coli is gram negative. So it's out of, no, no talking at all. So in all this gram positive, oval budding cell is this one. So you're going to candida. So next time if they ask you same round budding cell like this, if they ask round budding cell, then that is cryptococcus. Don't forget, cryptococcus. Maybe in upcoming exam, you know, they always repeat the things similar things so oval budding cell candida round budding cell is your cryptococcus which causes meningitis hiv patient if you remember okay that's it next one now look at this beautiful question now here is this question you have a ehec that is uh, enterohemorrhagic e coli so we have o157 h17 so what h7 means okay this is again basic but you know most of them uh, if i was a student i would have made mistake here we would concentrate on the types of e coli but we would not concentrate on the basic thing you know this o and h so i uh, if i am teaching we always teach them like this remember the cell wall is like this a bacteria cell wall is round okay so this is a cell wall which is o shape cell wall o shape you know it looks like a o and for flagella you know how is how is the flagella looks like this no like i'm i'm going to make a beautiful uh, flagella okay i'm going to make a beautiful flagella like this h okay so this is your this is your this is a flagella so how does it looks like it looks like a shape h H is a flagella. Okay, the central one is just for imagination, but the flagella is outside. Now, so your cell has flagella like this. So like this. So you make a design like this. So H for flagella. So any H, that means it is flagella. So cell wall means next time if they ask what O stands for, O for cell wall, the entire cell. Okay, and the flagella is like this, flagella. Very simple. Okay, very simple. Easy. If you, uh, next time you will not make mistake in this. Okay, don't worry. More, more revisions will come. Uh, you will get PG and you will go. Don't worry. But if some students were just started for PG preparation, this is for them only. So we will have more revisions again upcoming uh, this thing. You will be thorough with your micro. No need to worry. Yes, look at this question. Now when you see this question, I will not read the question. First I will see the picture and I will be so happy because this is a wheel. And first of all, it looks like a wheel. It looks like a wheel, cart wheel, and a wheel. A cart wheel, a steering wheel, pilot wheel, any, some wheel, okay, wheel shape, okay, cart wheel shape. Now what I do, if I have wheel, I'm not going to beat it, I'm going to rotate the wheel, right? I'm going to rotate. So when I see this beautiful wheel, what I'm going to do? Rotate, rotate. So rotate, what should I rotate? Rota, you already have an answer there. Do you have to use your brain or think too much? There's so many viruses, the adenovirus, there is rabies virus, different space vehicle, bullet shaped, uh, starry, star shaped appearance. So space vehicle, many things are there. So you will get confused. So remember easy, a wheel, a wheel to rotate. So simply the answer is rota virus. Otherwise, also, you know, they're given very nicely to this time. Uh, they give many clues for you. A two year old child with diarrhea is enough to say it is rotavirus. But yeah, some are, like adenovirus also can cause. But unfortunately, adenovirus is space vehicle because Adnan Swami is a very rich singer. So he has a space vehicle. Adnan and Swami. Norwalk, Norwalk, no any specific uh, important here. Arena. They don't have any specific seats here. So here the important thing is today. And of course, in mycology also, one cartilage that is this time they didn't ask, that is paracochidiosis. 
Parapocardiosis also caught will appear, eh? that is pilot wheel, stellar wheel, etc., which is like Mickey Mouse sign, if you remember, it's like this. It's like this. Okay, that is for the mycology in parapocardiosis, dimorphic fungi. Here in viruses, there's only one rotate. You have to rotate the wheel. Rotate for rotavirus. Very simple. So you would have, I'm sure there is no mistake. You guys, even without revision given, this question would have been right for you guys. I'm I'm glad. I, I'm sure I know that. Okay. Next question. Look at this one. Now, here there's a patient comes with a fever. Lower limb edema pigmentation. So anything lower limb edema, edema, automatically your mind will think at least one thing, elephantiasis. Okay, elephantiasis. So on the stain, they showed a microphilaria with no nuclear in the tip. Maybe this picture was not given, but the clue is there is this is this is the picture. If the picture was at here and you see no nuclear. So what I'm going to do is that I tell my students from like this. First of all, there are three things you have to draw. One is a beautiful elephant. Okay, one is a beautiful elephant. It's now but an elephant. Okay, elephant. And the elephant's tail, elephant's tail. Okay. And other one is the beautiful deer. Okay, beautiful deer. You know the deer, you do it. Okay, deer. Uska be tail. Uska be tail. Okay, tail. Okay. And then third one is your human. Man. Man. Okay. Man. Let's assume man is also having a tail. Okay. Let's assume the man is also having a tail. Assume. Okay. Assume. So, sir, what is this? It's so funny. Yes, it is funny because look, big elephant, such a big elephant. But there is no nuclear. Remember, tail has no nuclear. Because you know the elephant tail is small, no? So nothing is there, no nuclear. Deer, deer already it has fully dot, dot, dot. So dot everywhere dot. So tail also has many nuclei, many nuclei, many nuclei, many nuclei. Deer, deer, many nuclei. Elephant, big elephant, no nuclei. And man, 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 man is always. Boy and girl. So just two nuclei. Boy and girl, two nuclei. So what I want to say, no nuclei, your Usteria bancrafti, which causes elephantiasis. Don't forget the disease name, okay? Elephant is caused by Usteria bancrafti. Your answer is got it. Next time, if they're going to ask you, Burgay Malay nothing, uh, lower lower, deer fly. So lower lower will have just many nuclei. So they give the same picture with many nuclei. Your answer should be lower lower. Man, man, so Nella, man, if it comes man, remember man always lives with a boy and a girl, two, two, so two nuclei, just two nuclei, remember like this, two nuclei, so you got it, you never know these days, whatever, at, at least in INACT next time they might ask this type of questions, you know, so for, uh, prepare for worse, but don't make it tough, micro should be always in your fingertip, that is my policy, whatever it is, 19 subject, micro should be your top five easiest subject, that is my goal okay so for you guys next time we'll do if you get other option you'll easily get so this is a deer fly which is causing lower lower mansonella i have made it man for you guys okay this is what i like to uh you guys to remember okay now look at the next question beautiful question a patient present with a urethral discharge unprotected sex okay that is definitely st sexually transmitted this with a urethral discharge okay so now when you talk about urethral discharge that's with this question in just before exam only we revised also in 122 new question maximum at least of 30 questions asked 20 questions from our revision just the last moment 122 new questions which i made from there only it came okay uh many students were revised they told me thank you so much for uh, saying that it is, I was happy to hear that one. Yes. Okay. Now, then STD, urethral discharge, the two things, either gonococcus or chlamydia. So, they did a gram stain. In gram stain, you remember, chlamydia cannot be gram stain. So, whatever the picture here, even if you don't remember, there should be only one option that is a gonococcus. You understand? When I'm talking STD, this is a discharge. When they talk about the ulcer, that is different. Syphilis, H. decrees, herpes, herpes simplex, etc. But we're talking about discharge, only two important. Gonococcus and chlamydia are the most common one. So uh, we're talking about urethral discharge, not vaginal discharge, urethral discharge. Okay, don't confuse with vaginal discharge is different. That is candida, BV, TV, bacterial vaginosis, trichomonas vaginosis or candidiasis. Here we're talking about urethral discharge, only two. Gonococcus and chlamydia. Chlamydia, you can't stain. You know, the cell wall has a problem there. You can't stain it. So only when you stain something and you get that should be your gonococcus only. Okay. Remember like that. So anyway, it's intracellular and it's a diplococci. You know, the diplococci, kidney shaped, diplococci, gram negative. Okay. Nasalia, gonorrhea. So that, the, the, this, the, the diagnosis is nasalia, gonorrhea. But what is the question they asked? Gonorrhea. 
But the question they ask is, what is treatment? You know that gonococcus means the best is ceftriaxone. But here, also cefixin. They are same generation, so it doesn't matter. Ceftriaxone or cefixin. Both are right answers. Okay. Now, and Azithro will go for your chlamydia. You will treat the chlamydia. Yeah, for chlamydia, even doxy also will work for that, in fact. Okay. For chlamydia. But also doxy could be other diseases. Penicillin, you go for uh, syphilis. Okay. Right. Okay. We are finished with this question. So it was simple. No any chance of making mistake here. Now, other question also, we are, this is also again, same picture, the patient with urethral discharge, unprotected sex, and gram stain, I don't know whether they give gram stain picture or this picture, so this is flow of seeds, they call, flow of grains or flow of seeds, when the flow of grain flow of seed come, that is your nasiria gonorrhea again. Again, nasiria gonorrhea. This time, I think there was question from both nasiria gonorrhea and also nasiria meningitis. That's what I stressed that question, if you remember. In 122 question, I made three questions based on this only and question, you got it. So, nasiria gonorrhea, now what happened? Now they told uh, best media. Best media means they're asking about selective media. I always told when Nisha comes, nasiria gonorrhea comes, for both meningitis and these two, same except the transport media. I told, remember Nisha, Nisha. Nisha's boyfriend is a chocolate boy. He's a chocolate boy. And where, what is name? His name is Tyre Martin. Tyre Martin. Chocolate by Tyre Martin. And he is from New York. New York. Okay. So, it means what, what Nisha is doing? Nisha is aims to marry him. Nisha aims to, you know, aims to travel to New York to marry. Aims to travel to marry whom? To marry the Tyre Martin. Okay. Nisha's boyfriend is a chocolate boy. Everything is a question. Nisha Nasiria. Chocolate boy, chocolate agar. We can use chocolate agar as a selective media also. Tyre Martin is the best and most selective. Tyre Martin and New York. Modified New York media. Tyre Martin is the best selective media. And AIMS because Emmys media. Emmys media is a transport media. Okay. So what is the answer here? Tyre Martin. You got it. Nisha Nasiria. Nisha's boyfriend, Tyre Martin, chocolate boy. All right, New York. Okay, all are selective media. The best is Tyre Martin and the New York media, but uh, chocolate is also right. Okay, blood agar? No, it's not selective. Wilson Blair? No, Wilson Blair is he's a bodyguard of our Salmonella type E. Okay, Salmonella type e selective media. If you want to just all media for both Shigella Salmonella, one media that differentiate both Salmonella and Shigella growth is the Wilson Blair media. Wilson, the dark guy, I told Salman's bodyguard that they asked you to confuse you. Mekong Kiega, definitely not. It is not a selective media for this thing. Uh, it's again partially selective one. It's a differential media, okay, not a selective media. So Tyre Martin is easy question. So it is important. Gonococcus is always important. Every year you have a question. So this time they asked this and I'm sure you made it right. Now, next question. This question, in 122 question, I stressed it and they asked it. I'm so glad because actually I, I was so, I told you guys, actinomyces nocardi has not been asked for many years now. So, expect it and exactly it came. Okay. So, I'm really glad, thanks to God, that uh, if students were, were seen this properly in that revision part, they would have got it. Okay. So, now here, a farmer with the wound on a uh, foot, let a uh, farmer, a farmer, he has wound on his foot, later he went into the subcutaneous tissue, uh, with discharging ulcers, okay, subcutaneous tissue discharging ulcer and gram stain, a gram positive branching thin filament was seen. First of all, many clues. Subcutaneous tissue means it's a you know the shortcut is whenever uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, subcutaneous infection, the subcutaneous infection to study subcutaneous what you do you have to do MRCS. Okay, MRCS. What is MRCS? M for mycetoma, R for rhinosporidiosis, rhinosporidiosis, and the other C for uh, uh, chromoblastomycosis, chromoblastomycosis, and S for sporothrix, sporothrix. So here, it's a gram stain, you have a branching thin filament. So this is all nothing, not, 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 not any of this. They all are proper fungi. So here, they're talking about the bacteria. So mycetoma is caused by two things. We have actino mycetoma other one is u mycetoma u mycetoma is again fungus a e for e and have no fungi so this we discussed a lot i don't stress this so it's out now only things actinomycetoma which is caused by bacteria there are two bacteria which is causing actinomycetoma one is the actinomyces actinomyces is really or whatever we discussed a lot other one is no cardia these are the two bacteria that causes mycetoma. The patient here is having the typical mycetoma that is actinomycetoma, which is caused by a bacteria. And that bacteria is branch gram positive thin filament. Okay, now again, if you go shortcut, we always say gram positive means the shortcut is McDonald's. McDonald's. McDonald's, right? So in McDonald's, sporothrix out. 
It's not, it's not going to give a gram positive stain, definitely not. Histoplasma is out, it is a fungal, it's not coming here. So it should be no cardiac staphylococcus. So I'm going to see. Oh, I have a problem. You might say, sir, now it's a problem. I have, yes, staphylococcus also, and I have N also. So what should we? Thank God they didn't give acnomyces. Uh, we can differentiate the acnomyces, anaerobic, and no cardiac, aerobic also. That's a different story. Now in these two, you might get a confusion. So why not staphylococcus? Not staphylococcus, because staphylococcus, I told, starts like grapes. They are gram-positive grape-like clusters. They are cocci. They are cocci grape-like clusters. Okay. But your no cardia and acnomyces are, they are like a rods, branching filament, typical branching filaments like this. Sometimes you call sun ray appearance also. Sun ray appearance, spindle, hopefully phenomenon, biopsy, you can see this all for these things only. I acnomyces, no cardia. So this was the picture exactly you got. So the answer was no cardia. Usually it causes lung infection, meningitis, but skin infection also it can cause. And it is acid fast staining also. If you want to distinguish acnomyces and nocardia, you have to do acid fast stain. Of course, nocardia is aerobic and acnomyces anaerobic. Next time, expect this question. You will have one question, surely they'll give something like this and tell how to distinguish acnomyces and nocardia. We'll revise in the discussion class. Okay, now simple McDonald's, everything is poison. Uh, the, the branching filament would be either no cardia acnomyces. Here is typically no cardia. Finished. Remember, that's what I told. Please remember gram positive, positive people go to McDonald's. Purple, okay. Pink, uh, I'm sorry, violet color or purple color. Gram positive means negative means pink color. Okay, right. Excellent. This question, uh, don't look at the picture. The picture was not given this question. The question was very direct and this is like 100% I'm sure you guys made it right. So this was a patient with thalassemia or sickle cell, I'm not sure, but doesn't matter. Any blood disorder was there. Which virus attacks the progenitor cell and cause our plastic animacy? They've just asked beautifully, easily that, you know, that uh, directly asked. No any confusions in this question. Aplastic anemia means it's a, you automatically think about which one, our Choti Paru. This is a Paru, you know, from Devdas movie, our Choti Paru, right? We call this Choti Paru, small Paru, because this is the smallest virus, okay, I'm not talking. And what happened? Uh, the story which I made is first, she, she, she hates children. So she slaps, she slapped what? Children. Okay, she slapped children with the five fingers, with the five fingers. Slapped because what? The disease name is slap cheeks appearance, slap cheek appearance. Okay, exactly like this. It will be like this. Otherwise, also called infectiosum. Ethema infectiosum. Hep for five. Infectiosum. Five fingers because slap five finger. Also called fifth day disease. Fifth day disease. Okay, God. Now, what happened? As a punishment, because she hates the children, as a punishment, what happened? Paru, maybe in Paru, they have this part two, you will see Paru's child. God has cursed her child with two, three diseases. What are they? One is aplastic anemia. One is aplastic anemia. Okay, God cursed our power with three diseases, aplastic anemia, and other one is pure red cell aplasia, pure red cell aplasia, pure red cell aplasia, and the third one is what? What is that? You know that that is your hydrops fetalis, but non-immunogenic, non-immunogenic hydrops fetalis. Okay, frequently asked question, this time directly they are. So if you have mass parvovirus B19, you're absolutely right. You got it. Okay. Easy, no? This question is easy. I'm going, I'm going to the next one. Nugent's criteria, just before exam, we spoke a lot. Nugent's and another one is, next time you might expect Amsler's criteria. Amsler's criteria. This is for your bacterial vaginosis. Okay. Nugent's is basically gram stain, microbiology. Based on the gram stain, you're going to put a criteria. Amsler's is clinical criteria. Clinical criteria. You know Nugent's, I'm not going to talk everything. Uh, basically, Nugent's, what happened? Your Gardenella uh, and Mobilincus bacilli will go high, high, whereas your lactobacilli will go down, less. Okay, based on this, you make a criteria. Amsels means based on the discharge, you have a thin discharge, graze discharge, you have to do a pH, which goes more than 4.5, and then you will see a closed cell, closed cell, and then you when add a KOH, what do you get? You get this uh, fishy order, amine smell or fishy order. So based on these two, one, two, three, four criteria, you're going to put, that's a clinical gynecologist criteria. Okay, that's it. So this is Nugent's and Amsels for this thing. So this is a simple, basic one okay so don't worry don't worry if you made mistake again i'm saying you will do you will get good results don't worry if not also you will you will always get the best that is uh my wish for you guys okay doctors now next one a patient developed a painful vesicle wow that's enough why do you, they don't you don't even need this picture if they've given already painful vesicle or even if they didn't give they just give this you know this is a typical vesicle Vesicle, you see blisters you know vesicle or blisters you can say and it's painful so if it's painful you have only uh what you are automatically your mind will go to herpes simplex 2 only but yes other things three syphilis less pain no pain 
LGD also, you have no pain in the ulcer. You have pain in the lymph node, but no painful ulcer. So no pain in the ulcer vesicle. Now here, vesicle is one tool, but even if the if it, uh, chancroid, which is called by Haemophilus dukiri, which can also cause painful, but that is more ulcer. That causes most ulcer, not the vesicle. You don't have vesicle, you have ulcer. So the characteristic answer is your herpes simplex virus. Okay, which was, you know, science smear, and you see what a beautiful multinucleated giant cell you'll see. Okay, yes. Now, next one. In this question, uh, okay, now this one a HIV patient, HIV positive patient with diarrhea on stool examination, no eggs or oh, no ova, but a motile larva was seen. Okay, this is such a googly question. First of all, egg in stool, you don't see egg means itself. You have to rule out what? First of all, in egg, you will see definitely, you will see again, ascaris, you will see egg, and cyclostoma, cystosoma, everywhere, the egg is there. You know the shape of the eggs also we have studied. But the only place where we didn't study the egg shape is your stronguloides. Don't confuse with the cystosoma, this is different. Stronguloides, we always, I gave you the cool. Remember, a strong woman, a strong woman doesn't need a husband. She no need, no needs. No need a husband, no need a man. A strong woman is always strong. That's what I call her. She's like a current. Larva currents happen, a strong woman. And more or more, they go ovo vivi paris. Ovo vivi paris means the egg will be laid. But what happened? That egg immediately hatches as the larva and go to the stool. You will see in the stool, larva only. The egg will be just sort of a short time present. Immediately, larva will come. That's what she's a strong woman. Okay, that's something uh, parthenogenesis also, they, it comes, you know, without any fertilization, egg producing, everything is in strong woman. That's what strong woman doesn't need a man. Ovoviparous egg is laid, immediately larva comes out. That's it. Okay, so it's a strong eloidus. Remember like that. Okay, that this strong eloidus asked two, three times now, recent, in the last two years, they've asked frequently. So strong eloidus is important. So this is the only way which larva. Strong woman doesn't, no need egg, no need men. Directly larva. That's it. Remember like that. Ovoviviparous, big name. Okay, yes. Next question. Look at this one. So another, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So now here, uh, this question again, we, talk, we talked of Nazire. One more question has come. So a rash and meningitis symptom with a military background. Meningitis, yes. Meningitis, anything can cause meningitis here. But the rash is very characteristic for your Nazaria meningitis only. If you remember, the rash sometimes become big. It's called purpura fulminis. We just discussed before the exam in 122 uh, important questions of micro revision. We talked this and I showed it also purpura fulminans. Same rash. Rash comes, it's meningitis, Nazaria meningitis. And one more thing I told. Very common infection in a complement deficiency. MAC complex means it is C5 to C9 complement deficiency. That's called MAC complex. In this deficiency, who comes? Nasiria comes. Nasiria comes. So, characteristically, Nasiria meningitis. All are capsulated. One clue, see, all are capsulated. So, all can cause meningitis. Because of the rash and complement deficiency, my answer should be Nasiria meningitis. Okay, that is the right answer. Complete complex, MAC complex or complete C5 to CNA deficiency. Very simple. You would have made it right, I'm sure. Next question, a patient from Bihar. Patient from Bihar with splenomegaly. You know that the Bihar is one clue. Splenomegaly, another clue to say simply it is what? Kala Azar. Kala Azar. That is enough. Even if they give hyperpigmentation, uh, lymphadenopathy, whatever. Main thing is splenomegaly and dark pigmentation is there and the clue is from Bihar. So that is Kalazar means that is your visceral leishmaniosis. Visceral leishmaniosis, which uh, leishmaniosis and uh, that's Kalazar. So this is basically transmitted by sandfly, phlebotomus, sandfly or phlebotomus. So this is your sandfly phlebotomus is the answer. Right, okay. So, uh, black fly, that is the simulium, uh, river blindness, deer fly, loa loa, you know, rat flea, many things, plague. Okay. So, here we're talking about Kalaza, so it is sand fly. Okay. Black death. Oh, no, black disease, sorry. Black disease. Black death is plague. So, to confuse them, might have, you know, asked plague, I don't know. So, next question asked. This question, really, I didn't get proper picture of what they were saying. Here, uh, one thing, this female with foul smelling discharge, dysuria, abdominal pain. On pap smear, this was given. I don't know the picture was given was a, a multinucleated giant cell ka picture or it was, uh, you know, something like this, you know. Uh, they haven't, I think they didn't do proper trachomonas vaginalis ka picture. But one thing we can rule out here is, uh, multinucleated it shouldn't be multinucleated because in, in herpes simply usually causes ulcer. It doesn't cause any discharge. 
one thing. Papilloma discusses the warts. Again, no discharge. So when you CMV also no. CMV cause some rare ulcers, anything, but no discharge. So when you talk about foul smelling discharge, then only possibility here is trichomonas vaginalis. Probably this is the single. We always know trichar. I told Trisha is single. So there's only single nucleus. There's like the single nucleus like this. You know this is the round shape. And then single nucleus uh, like this. It should be and you know, flagellas are there. Five flagella should be there. Anterior four and posterior one. Okay. So that was if that was the clue. Or based on this, you you should choose trichomonas vaginalis only. That is my idea because I don't think the, the, the option means there was no candidate. It can be candidate, can be, of course, uh, your uh, BV also. But typical foul smelling discharge, dysuria, and all with this type of picture comes. This single, single here, and then a small picture is given. That should be more your trichomonas. This one example here and all that is your trichomonas vaginalis. Okay, this is what I uh, think this option, then I would go with trichomonas vaginalis. Next, costive agent of this. This is also another one tricky question. Uh, after a long time, they were asked. This uh, basically the uh, endothrix and uh, ecto ectothrix, you know, that one. The image. So here, if this was the image given, first of all, you can see the this is a hair shaft. No, this is a hair shaft. So here, mostly, you see the uh, conidias here. I don't know exactly it's orthophony. What if the conidias, if you see here, it is inside. So it is endothrix. Endothrix. And other one is exothrix. If it's outside, it's called exothrix. Outside the hair. Exothrix, the most common is the trichosporon. Trichosporon, not trichophyton. We're talking about uh, uh, trichosporon, not trichophyton. Trichosporon is totally another thing. Okay, trichosporon. So here uh, we don't see anything outside. So this is out. Trichosporon is out. Candida will not be this picture. This is also out. So your fight is between microsporon or epidermophyton. So how to rule it? One thing is microsporon affects what? Skin plus micro hair, hair follicle. Hair follicle, no, but trichophyton we always say epidermis skin again, skin will be there plus N for nail. So that is one clue to say that epidermophyton is not possible. So microsporon would be the only hair. If you talk about hair follicle, the only possibility is microsporum or trichophyton. Unfortunately, trichophyton also, but trichophyton is not given. So we are thank God it's not given. Otherwise, that caused more confusion. So trichosporin is out because it usually causes exothrix. Now, endothrix means it could be trichophyton, it could be caused by your uh, microsporum also. So because microsporum is given, I'll go with microsporum. That is what I think. So if this is the option, this thing, uh, my option would be microsporum only. Okay, that's it. Now, next, best PCR for syndromic approach. Okay, what is this? Uh, yeah, I know you must uh, you might have talked more may, about PCR. You guys must be thorough. The one is the you know, uh, traditional, our conventional PCR, which is, no, I think that was option D. Someone told me. That is definitely not best. We have many things have come. RT-PCR, of course, the travel, uh, the reverse transcript, real-time uh, PCR also is the uh, uh, reverse uh, transcript as PCR. They are also good. But here the question is syndromic management. Syndromic management is example for STD, multiple bacteria. Example for STD is caused by gonococcus, it's caused by chlamydia, it's caused by herpes simplex virus, it could be syphilis, anything. So multiple this thing, if I have to do one PCR instead of wasting so much time and anything, I would prefer what? A multiplex PCR. Not only for STD. For meningitis, sepsis, because you don't know there are so many bacteria can cause meningitis, sepsis, unit act infection, everything. Multiple disease, multiple bacteria, multiple organisms, it could be bacteria, virus, anything. So for that, the best one instead of wasting time for individual organism, I could put a sample at one and then identify. So multiple species is the best one for any syndromic management. Okay. So nested is good sensitivity and specificity, but for syndromic management, it is multiplex only. Multiplex species is the best, best, best. So you will not waste the time. Easily you can identify what is the organism and treat the patient. Okay, that's what. That is revolutioning actually. And these are the other questions which uh, um, some people said it came, some people were confused. So, but uh, we will revise, it doesn't matter. A child with a recurrent infection, thymus gland is absent, uh, ADA levels are low. First of all, the one clue is enough. Thymus gland is absent, means itself. there is gone. There is what is gone. There is no, uh, uh, no cell immunity and no humoral immunity. No humor limited. That means both your T cell is out and B cell is also out. Both are out. Okay. And area adenos and DMNS level also low. That is the main reason. So that disease is basically if option if you given severe common immune deficiency disorder, that is right. That is more than enough to say. Both the uh, things will go down. Both the T cell, B cell will go low. So ADA will be low. That is severe common immune deficiency disorder. Okay. Now the proteus causes which is shown. We discussed so many times about this. P for proteus, P for 
phosphate, not pseudomonas phosphate. So this is a triple phosphate stone. If they, if they ask the question this, it's a triple phosphate stone or otherwise called staghorn stone. Uh, usually what? Staghorn stone. Usually what? It is coming in which one? Uh, uh, alkaline urine. When the urine is alkaline, you know, because Proteus makes the urine alkaline. Alkaline. So in alkaline urine, this triple process. And the prognosis is very good. You can, can be easily removed and treated. Okay. So this one. And uh, yeah, last one was, I think this interleukin 8 question was there. Someone told me. So 8 ka, again, this, uh, we didn't have much time to immunology revision at that time. Sorry. But then uh, my lectures are there. You can see previous such immunology. It's, I made very easy also there. So 8, no, art. Okay. Chemo art. You have art there. Very simple, no? Chemo art. 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 art in Hindi is 8. So chemotaxis. So you would have not used, you don't need to use brine. So chemotaxis is there. I will simply cover it. Lymphocyte proliferation. L. My L looks like 7, no? Ulta. So interleukin 7 is for lymphocyte proliferation. If the next time if they ask, remember. Okay. Fever. Always fever is first hep. First hep for fever. Okay. So it is interleukin 1. That's it. Okay. T helper. Ka. T. T sounds 2, not Three also T two so I go with T helper T for T helper T T so T for I go interleukin two very simple so if this was option I don't know whatever they asked but if it is interleukin eight your answer is chemotaxis okay yes I think we have done uh, so uh, so basically I don't want to exaggerate too much and all definitely some twenty to twenty five questions is uh, very easy easy direct questions you know if you have revised for one year definitely you would have answered it if you made few mistakes it's fine. Other five questions definitely is confusion for anyone, even for us also. It's not that we just you saw and then we immediately answered. We analyzed it and saw the research and checked which is the right answer, and then we came to this conclusion. But whatever it is, uh, once again we'll wait. I'll pray for good things to happen for all of you guys. But uh, yeah, even just go through this also, and uh, all the best. Thank you so much, guys.